Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up. February was a really interesting month because it was one of those months where I felt like I was not getting anything accomplished, but now looking back on it as I start to wrap it up, I realize that, oh no, there's plenty going on this month. <laughs> so first off, I always like to go over the videos that I made this month. I did an unboxing video for you guys where I got a bunch of book mail at the same time. One of them was the book of the month unboxing that I've been doing every month. One of them was a quarterly unboxing and one of them was just like random on solicited mail from a publisher. <laughs> so check that out if you haven't already. In that video I'm giving away a copy of the animators. If you are watching this video early enough the contest is still open. I have it open until February 28th. I don't know what time it closes so depending on what time it is on February 28th it may or may not still be open but if you go to that unboxing video there is a link in the description and just enter there and then whoever wins I will contact them through the email that they provide. It's only open to U.S. residents because I am actually mailing the copy myself and I can't afford international shipping. The next video that I made was a discussion video where I talked about books that I DNF. Um, I feel so bad because I don't talk about what DNF means until like a good minute and a half into the video. DNF stands for did not finish by the way. But yeah, check that video out for just a little bit of a discussion on why I DNF books and why I don't really talk about them on my channel and I don't even really talk about them on Goodreads and I have reasons for that. There's been some really interesting comments on that video just seeing how other people read and seeing what their habits are. I think it's just really interesting to always see how different people handle these sort of situations and how they view things differently than I might and things like that. So I always appreciate that. And then the final video that I made in the month of February was a book review on Panchinko. Pachinko. I keep mispronouncing this word. Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I think I got it right that time. Um, this is a really fantastic book. It's probably the best book that I read in the month of February, but you can hear all about that in my book review. As for the other books that I read this month, um, the first book that I finished was Inside Out and Back Again. This is a young adult book that's written in verse, which I did not realize it was written in verse until I had already like checked it out from the library, but it was beautiful. I love the sort of middle grade young adult books that are written in verse. I feel like it's such a beautiful what way to tell a story. In this story you are following this young girl named Ha. She lives in Saigon, Vietnam and she's just growing up living her life in Saigon when the Vietnam War breaks out and her and her family are forced to flee her their home and they end up traveling to the United States as refugees and it's about them growing up in the United States, acclimating to this new life, having to learn English, dealing with like bullies, people who are just absolute jerks. Again, like I said, it's just a beautiful book. If you are someone who wants more information about refugees, I definitely recommend this book, especially because it's a really fast read. If you're someone who liked Brown Girl Dreaming, I feel like this is just like the perfect follow-up for a book like that because they have such similar styles. They evoke so much emotion and I think it's a really great perspective on refugees and the reasons why people leave their countries and how difficult it is for them. I feel like there is this false narrative out there that people are flocking to the United States because they just want to live in the United States but a lot of times these people are again refugees and they would probably rather stay in their homes but their homes are being destroyed and taken over by these wars and armies and they have no other choice and so I feel like this was just a beautiful beautiful book to read I highly recommend it I gave it a four out of five stars it's definitely one of those that I want to own a physical copy of myself because it's just amazing the next book that I finished was American Street by E.B. Zaboy this is a new release that just came out in February I believe this is a young adult book and you in this story, you are following this girl named Fabiola. She's in about high school. She's from Haiti. Her mother lives in Haiti as well, and they are immigrating to the United States. When her mother gets detained at the airport, she ends up having to move in with her cousins and her aunt in Detroit without her mother. And so there's a lot happening in this story story. There is the storyline of Fabiola wanting to get her mother out of this like detention and to be able to live here in the United States with her. There's the storyline of Fabiola adjusting to her life in the United States. Um, there's a storyline about life in Detroit and what it's like for these black kids living in Detroit right now and dealing with like gangs and drugs and lack of opportunities and things like that. I like this book. I didn't love it. I think that there were just too many storylines happening in this book for the amount of book that it was. I think it's only like 300 and something pages. I think there was just way too much happening but I liked all of the stories sort of on their own. Like I think that if one or two of these storylines were explored more fully in this book. I would have enjoyed it significantly more and then if 
the other storylines were explored in a different type of book like that would have been great as well um i understand sort of the point of all of these storylines being talked about because these are all issues that kids have to deal with there's a lot of discussions in here about fabulous cousins and their life and their choices that they're making there's a lot of discussion about like gangs and violence and drugs and the realities of growing up in certain neighborhoods and i think again all of that is great to discuss but again it's just was too much happening so i only gave it a three out of five stars only only three out of five stars is still pretty good it means i like the book but i don't think it went as far as i wanted it to especially for the topics that it was covering i feel like there's so much more that could have happened here but it was one of those books that in the beginning i wasn't really enjoying but then i just kept reading and it really won me over by the end there's also some like romantic storylines in here that i wasn't really a big fan of but that's again a personal preference thing i think more than just the book itself but yeah it was just like a three out of five star book for me the next book that i finished was bellwether rhapsody this is a book i kind of picked up on a whim it's a book i've heard a little bit of buzz about from various people on booktube but i was just in need of an ebook to read at work and this one was available from the library so i checked it out this story all takes place over the course of a weekend in this hotel called the bellwether hotel approximately like 15 years ago there was this murder suicide that happened on this couple's like wedding night and then you flash forward to what is basically like present day in that book i think it actually takes place in like the 90s and there is this like music festival that's happening in this hotel you're following these two siblings the sister is an actress and she is staying with this sort of like flute prodigy who suddenly disappears one night there are parts of this book that i really enjoyed as someone who was in high school orchestra and went to events like this a lot of this was like slightly nostalgic for me just it brought me back to what it was like to be in high school in orchestra or band to go on these trips where you meet all of these other sort of amazing musicians and to be stuck together for like a weekend in this really intense place but there's also so much of it that rings so false to me because i have experience with it as well like where are all of the parents <laughs> I felt like this book dragged a lot in the middle. There is this overarching mystery that's happening here with this missing girl and a couple of other things that happen in the hotel over the course of this weekend. And I felt like it really started to drag. I feel like the beginning was really great. It hooked me to the storyline. I was really intrigued by this hotel, by this situation, all the stuff that's happening. I feel like the middle just felt so heavy and dragged so much. Um, there's so many different characters that are introduced in this story that a lot of it I feel like could have been cut out. Again, this is a relatively short book. It's like 300 and something pages, but it felt like a lot of the extra sort of fat could have been trimmed. But then the ending sort of like picked it back up again and I was hooked again and I really wanted to know how everything was going to wrap up. So I gave this book a three out of five stars. It, again, it's not like an amazing book, but it's definitely fun. If you want something that's sort of like quick and has that murder mystery feel to it. I definitely think that this will fulfill that. And then the final book that I read this month was Stamped from the Beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America by Ibram X. Kendi. This is a nonfiction book that I picked up specifically because it's Black History Month. Um, this book won the National Book Award last year for nonfiction, which is another reason why I was on my radar. But this book was really fantastic. If you follow me on Goodreads, you will have seen me like slowly reading this book over the course of the month because it's like over 500 pages long the last like 100 pages or so of this is all just like notes and index and stuff so it's over 500 pages long and it's really dense with information so i would only read like two or three chapters a night and then just be done because i would feel like my brain is sort of like mush after that because it, it my eyes would like glaze over the page because there's just too much information. I couldn't take it all in at once. But yeah, it was really fantastic. The way this book is structured is it's broken up into five parts and for each part you're following a different person. So the five different people that each section is centered around is Cotton Mather, Thomas Jefferson, William Lloyd Lloyd Garrison, W.E.B. Du Bois, and Angela Davis, which I will say that there were certain sections that I liked more than others. And that premise or that idea or that structure is relatively loose because while you're sort of focused on these one single people it's really just about what was happening during that time in the united states while they were alive i think that the part that was surprisingly the least interesting to me was w.e.b du bois i think it was because it's the longest and also it's like the least connected to them so it felt like it was a little bit all over the place but the time that he was alive was also during the big movements of the civil rights movement so to ignore all of that would have been not a complete history 
but I just think this author does a fantastic job of documenting just the way that public perception of race and these various racist ideas have been from the beginning of the United States and have evolved or not evolved over time. Or you could see the roots of the way that we think now in those people in the past. And you can see how this has been a part of our country for so long and how it's so difficult to just get rid of these things because it's so embedded in us as U.S. citizens, even as someone who's not white, like you have these thoughts in you or you've experienced them or you've seen them from other people just understanding the history gives you so much perspective on it i think i think looking at it on this sort of macro level is something that people don't really do very often in general and i think that this book does a fantastic job of having that sort of macro view of our entire country's history so far seeing where we've come from, where we are now, and where things are headed, and even being realistic about race and racist ideas and how much things have changed and how much we still have to go. So I would highly recommend this one. I think that this one might be a little bit more daunting to people who don't regularly read nonfiction, but if you are a nonfiction reader, if you're a U.S. history person, this is definitely a book to check out. So that's everything that I've finished so far in the month of February. I'm currently reading London Hills by Gloria Naylor. There's a good chance I'm going to finish this before the month is over. I'm recording this on Sunday. So definitely check out my Goodreads if you aren't already. I will have thoughts on this on Goodreads and then I'll try my best to remember to talk about it in my March wrap up. But I'm really enjoying this so far. Gloria Naylor is just such a fantastic writer. Also, there's like an impromptu readathon that's happening this week that I am hoping to participate in. Uh, I'm not completely sure how that's going to turn out. But if you follow me on Instagram, you will see my TBR as well as I'm going to try to post like progress throughout the week, at least on my like Instagram stories. So if you're interested in any of that, check that out. I will have a link down below to the book quarter who is sort of hosting this impromptu readathon. Um, I just have a bunch of books that I want to read relatively soon so I'm just going to use this as an opportunity to do that so yeah that's everything that I have for you guys this month definitely leave a comment down below if you have any questions about any of the books that I read this month um, if you've read any of them yourself otherwise just leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite read was for this month and if you read anything for Black History Month at least here in the United States it's Black History Month so yeah that's all I have for now thanks for watching